Hi, do you feel like you have anxiety? I have tons of anxiety. And I also have heard people saying that they have generalized anxiety or they have crippling anxiety. So, okay, we all have anxiety. But does it mean that we actually feel the same physically? Do we experience anxiety the same? I don't really think so. I think anxiety works more like a spectrum and each of us is kind of in a different place in this spectrum. So I kind of wanted to uh, make a list of my physical anxiety symptoms so that maybe um, we could compare and you could let me know in the comments if you experience similar things or maybe you have completely different uh, anxiety experiences. And since I am about to do an extremely anxiety-inducing thing in my life, like at the end of this week, uh, all of these symptoms, I am really, I am like experiencing them right now for the last mm, month or like since the last, uh, since my last post. So this is very um, like topical for me at the moment. So I thought maybe I should do a video about this and we could talk about it. Okay, so here goes the list. So number one is this general feeling of nervousness. And the way how I feel it is basically this feeling like of butterflies in my stomach. I guess people call it butterflies, but when they usually mean uh, something positive uh, about it, like, I don't know, maybe like having a crush on someone and seeing them, then you like have these little butterflies in your tummy. But in this case, when I feel anxiety and nervousness, this is more like, uh, this is a similar feeling to butterflies, but this is more like a nagging feeling. It's negative feeling. It's really unpleasant feeling. So therefore, I don't really call it butterflies. I call it tummy pain because I just don't have a better word for that because it feels like pain to me, like slight pain, but still super uncomfortable. Number two is nausea. And this is a big one for me because I can really easily tell when I am anxious if I feel nauseous. And nausea is the feeling I absolutely hate. And I just feel it constantly and I feel like I'm about to throw up. And it's kind of even worse because you don't really throw up. So the feeling never goes away. And it's just just really unpleasant. And then I feel it constantly until my anxiety goes away. So that's something I have to deal with. The next one, uh, third one, which is kind of related to nausea thing, is that I have absolutely no appetite. If I need to do something in a, on a particular day that makes me anxious, I most likely will not eat. And it's not because I wouldn't want to, it's, um, it's because I just can't, because I feel so nauseous that I cannot even you know, swallow the food. So sometimes I realize, of course, that for me to deal with the things in the day, I need to have the energy. And for me to have the energy, of course, I have to eat. So sometimes I kind of force myself to eat at least something. But usually it's extremely small doses just because I just cannot get anything down. Next one, which is actually also kind of related to my um, digestive system, right? So my digestive system is has kind of been weak all my life and it's really connected to my nerves. And if I feel anxiety, then my first symptoms most likely are going to be connected to my stomach and uh, to feeling uh, the feeling of nausea. And also this uh, amazing term that I heard actually only recently it was in a movie, um, stressoria. So it's like stress and diarrhea together. So you get like, you know, diarrhea from stress. And I think a lot of people kind of could relate to that because um, I have heard uh, people saying that when they feel stressed out or anxious, like going to the bathroom is like the first thing they have to do. And I myself have kind of like a funny term for it. I call it uh, panic poops because um, if you watch, if you have watched uh, Bob's Burgers, then you know what I'm talking about. There was an episode. Eddie, Bob had panic poops because a magazine is coming in the where Bob was really anxious uh, and there was like a thing uh, coming up and he was experiencing panic poops. And I thought that's like an amazing term because that's what it is. It's just panic poops. Okay, next one is shaky hands. I don't experience this really often. 
I experience it when I am usually already in the process of doing the anxiety inducing thing. For example, if I have to go somewhere. Um, and if I'm like on the way or the anxiety inducing thing is about to happen, like for example, it's like some sort of a meeting or an exam or something, I will feel that my hands are not entirely stable, I guess. And the next symptom, which is kind of related to this, it's the specific type of pain in my fingers, especially in my hands, hand fingers. It's like this, um, I don't, I cannot even actually kind of describe this. It's not like really sharp pain, but it's really persistent and unpleasant pain. And sometimes it goes in waves that you kind of feel it like the pain comes like through your fingers and it's like get, gets really intense for a moment then it a little bit subsides but it's always there approximately i don't know a few hours uh, before i have the anxiety inducing thing um the event or whatever i will feel this pain in my fingers and this is actually one of the symptoms that i um by which i can tell that I am actually extremely anxious because there are kind of levels to my anxiety on uh, some days I could just feel you know nausea or like general nervousness or I might not eat anything and then if it's really bad I'm gonna feel pain in my fingers and usually I just you know I just put up with it until it goes away okay next one is also related to pain I will wake up in the morning and not be able to move. I would just feel this pain all over my body, which is very similar to the pain I feel in my fingers when I am anxious. All right, uh, next one is light headaches that very often transform into migraines. I can actually kind of prevent this if I feel just light headache and I take painkillers right away, then I can stop it because when migraine has, you know, when it's in full force, you can't kind of cannot really stop it. You just have to wait it out. And it might take a few days. About a year ago and a half, I had really really bad migraines like daily migraines and it was so extremely bad that I could not work anymore you know like um, I had to I had to minimize my work hours and then eventually I quit my job and that is a story for another day so another big one is panic attacks and I kind of think that people experience these differently so my panic attack usually is when I feel this kind of like tension that goes from my stomach to my throat. And at that moment, I just start to hyperventilate. And I kind of feel like the world is caving in on me. And from hyperventilation, there's like this increased uh, oxygen, I guess, uh, inflow in my bloodstream, in my body. And this is what makes me feel lightheaded and dizzy. And this is why I usually have to sit down or just you know sit down on the floor if I'm standing or whatever because my my uh, feet are just my legs are they are not supporting me at all actually have you ever experienced a panic attack and how did it feel physically for you what what did you feel what physical symptoms did you have let me know in the comments and the last one is this specific feeling of complete exhaustion by the end of the day and I can tell when I have this feeling that I have been extremely stressed out or anxious during the day if I feel this feeling in the evening. And usually on uh, usual days when nothing anxiety inducing is happening, I will not feel this feeling. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my cat is going nuts in the background. I hope you don't really hear that. And I am really curious if you experience anxiety in the same way or maybe it is completely different. And if it is so, please let me know down in the comments and I'm sure other people will be interested in reading that as well. So that's it from me today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.